Hello LB families, this is Ari here, your costume facilitator, and today we are going to work on what it's like to make a necklace out of paper plates. And these are all dollar store plates. I got a large plate, I got a medium sized plate. I have just some gems from last year and around the house. Uh, cowrie shells is a, definitely an LB staple. I got some paintbrushes, once again dollar store. I think this one was um, a makeup one that I've now used for painting. Some scissors and just various paints, puff paints from around the house. And a glue stick, um, my go-to is a glue gun, and um, anything else that you might want to get crafty with when it comes to paper work stuff. Um, so we're gonna start with like a couple basic shapes. But for right now, this is our starting point. Now let's move into what the shapes will be from our paper plates. Grab one. We're going to clear the space and get ready to map these out. So from these two plate styles, I have like more of a traditional, you know, simple paper plate. And then more of the rounder, deeper inset plate. But... From these two simple plates, I kind of cut out a couple of shapes. Some of them, I guess on the kids level, if you use a smaller plate, you have the traditional or simple ring style where we cut away the whole base of the plate and left this out. And you could either decorate this side or you can decorate this side. And then I also cut out uh, and you could play with the shape of it. One, you definitely want to have room for your neck, especially for kids. You don't, you know, a couple of my family members walked away with some paper cuts on their necks. Um, so to prevent that, you know, try to cut away as uh, much of the plate as possible. But this is one style shape. I left it kind of bib-like here. And then playing off of that, I also cut this style in the sense of I left it to look like it's, um... It's a little different here. So to do that, we have our plate, we have our scissors. Step one, you can follow the circle of the plate to get the cut that you want. So we're just kind of picking like a middle point here. And if you only want this side, you can cut along this line. If you want a little bit of room, kind of go to this middle point here, turn, and then just do your best to cut around. Now, if you're young and you're doing this, use your safety scissors. And go all the way around. Now you have this base and you can paint it and decorate it and we'll do that soon if you wanted to do any of the different styles you could always cut two plates you can cut a second one and you can use the shapes and glue it here you can add more plates by gluing it here that's kind of a cool shape um, you can do a couple pieces where it's like one to, to give it a, a bigger base to work with. You can also cut shapes and you can use your hot glue gun and you can start by putting one here. You can put another one there and then you know we can paint them more. And then with these ones you can also do that. You can add these here. You can add it lower. You can do one all along the sides. There's kind of, it just depends on the type of necklace that you want to make. But these are all really good starting points for our plates. So we have this style, we have this style, we have one that's a little lower here, and then we, you know, we have the same one. So how did I get this one here, like this? Or even this one, like this here? So what I did was, I took the plate, You could take an old one like this, 
like a circle. You could go here. And I have my pencil. And now I'm going to try to trace or draw out a circle shape. And now when I cut, we're going to cut here, kind of this way. But we might need to cut a little bit into, into this here. Like if we put this down and trace like that. So it's going to be a little skinnier here and then it's going to go along there. And now I have this shape where it's skinnier here, more open so that it will fit on your neck. And you can do the same thing. You know, you can even add a bit this way or you could uh, do like different shape pieces. You could do like a teardrop and you could do a teardrop here and you can add them all around or you could take this out and you could cut little ones like this. And then you can glue them all along the sides. And this gives you a different shape too for your necklace. And you would paint all of these here like this. So these are the different basic shapes for this more uh, smaller style plate. And this is a good shape for kids, um, especially younger ones, so that they don't, they're not fighting so much with it on their neck. And I also figured out that if you cut the sides a little skinnier, it gives a different shape to the plate instead of trying to keep the whole section here and you can even if you wanted to taper in your plate more this way and it makes it a little skinnier it makes these a little thinner but you can always add a little bit of ribbon to keep it secure on the neck and you're kind of just eyeing it and rounding it out too and this is a smaller piece, but it still can be painted out to a necklace. Now, that's this plate. But what if you have these ones, these style plates? These ones are a little different. They're a little bit bigger. They're, you know, teens or adults could wear these ones. For the first one I cut, I this is the first one. It's too big. It didn't fit too well. Um, so this was a sample, but then I cut out different ones. So I, I have this here. So I did it more circular here. I tapered the edges down here. I did the same here. See, it's even thinner. If you, they're kind of the same, but this one is a little smaller. This one's a little wider. And then this one, I didn't cut any of it down. I just cut out the neck of the circle. What I also found out about these plates is it's actually better before you start cutting to kind of flatten out the plate a little bit. It makes it easier to work with and to draw out your shape like that. And then to be honest, I used like the inset of the smaller plate as my circle guide and I kind of placed it 
like this. And then I got my pencil and I kind of drew around the plate. Any, anywhere that didn't meet up. And you know, you kind of just, you can use a bowl, you can use um, like a smaller bowl or a smaller plate, but you don't want, you know, it's up to you how much of the bib or the plate that you want to take away. And then, you know, you kind of just find a middle point and you do the same that you did for the other plates. You start cutting in. Like this. And this is where you can cut down the sides or you can leave it open. But I do know that it feels more comfortable on the neck if you cut away a little bit of it from the back side. And what if you don't want it this big? You could even cut it down to just this part here you could cut shapes here, like one thing you could do is you can find a starting point and you can cut shapes this way and then like let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just to make it even, you can then go in and cut it this way. And if you wanted to add more or less, it's up to you. But the idea is to kind of feel the direction that you're going in. Like, let's say that this is a theme that's more... Um, it depends on the theme of, of your costume. If this is a piece that needs more of a statement piece, go crazy with the shapes, add-ons to make it that statement pop. You know, because here as well, we could take our smaller plate pieces and we can then glue one on each side, like a bigger one like that, or here on the edges, like that. So, let's see, this one's kind of big, right? Like that, or, we have our other shapes. We could take those away. And okay, so I picked the shape I wanted for my necklace. And then I started painting. I painted this one brown. It's drying. I'm going to keep adding to this one. I started with the gold. I think I'm going to put purple or green here. And then I went in and I painted this gold. Now, I, my paintbrushes are little, so instead of going little by little, I grabbed a sponge that, you know, is clean and, and something that you can let go of. And I cut it to be able to paint a little bit easier. So then I went and I just kind of dipping this in and just going back in and putting in the gold or whatever color you're using. Now, if you have other paintbrushes that make it easier to paint, keep with that. But this is just in case you don't, and we can't make too many runs to the store right now. So this is one way of getting a few more brushes in the house is cutting up a sponge that you can let go of. Um, so this needs to dry. This one, let's add some purple here. A little bit of this, or maybe some green to to kind of, these I'm only um, kind of modeling after our theme a little bit, but you can pick any color you want, any, any shade, get a little bit of this, and 
And then I recommend having like a paper towel or a paper bag on your table. This is my cutting table, so it's meant to kind of get paint on it. But if you can't get paint on your table, get a bag, cut it open, and use that as your work surface. And remember your primary colors, if you need a different color, mix your colors together and you can get other colors that way. So there's this one and this one is almost dry so what I want to do is kind of like here, right? You can go like this. The direction and the style you go is up to you. I'm kind of just going with the flow, how I see it kind of come to life. I actually really like the green, so I figured it will help with the brown. So now this one's gonna let this dry. So we have this one we have this one, and here we can add a little bit more green here. Now we need to let these dry. If you want to use some of these pieces, maybe one of these, or you want to use these tiles. Now would be the time to paint these ones. And then you can always grab like another plate. You can always grab another plate so that it's easy something for you to paint on, like here. Like that, and then maybe I want to do this one green. So I like that. So now I'll, I'll let these dry too. These are my accent pieces I want to use. So now everything needs to dry. Now you can take the time to wash your hands, clean up your space, maybe rinse your sponges to use for other colors. So now things have dried and now is the fun part where we can kind of decorate and see where we want to go. So I'll start with this one. I'll move this to the side. I have some cowrie shells, I have some gems here, um, and then I have like all of our little extra painted pieces, and I have my glue gun. So first, I think out of all of these, we could do them like this, 
But I think I want to glue this one kind of here in the middle. So I'll start by just and be careful if anything have a parent help you with this part. And then I have all of these cowrie shells here and these gems. So I think what I want to do is play around with the placement, right? So let's see. Go like that. I like the idea of going like this. And then we can go here. This part is really more of like your creative freedom. We can design this however you want to. Like that's really pretty and then I, think I have these here and we can add these in so first let's glue these down so we'll start one at a time
and then now this is ready or you can keep adding if you want to keep adding keep adding this is up to you at this point you know the sky is the limit I also have puff paint and you could do like decorative pieces or let's say that this is something that is like more neon and more futuristic as well you could always add glow in the dark for like Halloween if it's part of your Halloween costume um, and, and really just continue to, to decorate how you see fit for yourself. Then, we also have this one here. What do we want to do to this one? Um, let's see, if I made this for Lucas, my son, the idea is, you know, like, we can go here onto the green like this. Oh, I actually like that. Like that. Like that. like this and then for Lucas I have this black puff paint and I think what I'm going to try to do I'll just kind of test it okay so as part of our theme what I do know or you know just kind of circling back on that is I do know that there is a symbol that means perseverance in Andinkra so here, what we could do is, or um, wisdom and knowledge as well, but from what I believe, it's circular like this. So this one does mean perseverance, but it's more this way. Yes, please. And then you could do it again here. We can do a circle like this. And then another one is um, being versatile. So, and that's what we need right now. So here we can go this way. And this I just Googled the Andinkra chart to be able to, to show you guys. But these decorations are really just up to you and how you want to decorate and depending on the type of costume that you are decorating for and then here this isn't really a meaning I'm just going to continue this is a symbol that I saw a lot in mud cloth material to just kind of decorate out our piece and I believe it meant 
you know, continuing forward. So this is one version of our necklace. And now we can allow this to dry. If you wanted to, you could add gems to it as well. And then we have this one. There's so many that we could do with this one. Uh, I saved these pieces here, and they don't even have to go here. They could go here and be three-dimensional, like this. We can go like this. I kind of like that a lot. So here, I'll glue this down here. And with this one, let's see, I like this, and maybe we do all of them this way, like that. And then we have these, I like the idea of this here. That's nice, and I like the idea of this. Oh yeah, that's really pretty. And then the idea is to glue them all down. So
escape. I'm going to use this blue here, and I know that so this here. Oh. If something happens and you don't like the way it looks. Can always try to take it off. And then any happy little accident, you can always just add some more gems. And then, like I said, you can just keep adding more if you want to, but this is how our necklace looks. It was a plate, but now it looks like this. So we have this one that we decorated really nice. We have this one that we decorated. And we also have this one here. But like I said, you could always continue to add more pieces um, or more plates, however you see fit to make these more unique and your own. And also, this is kind of based off of our current theme for this year, but you can um, always adapt this to any type of costume that you're making and want to use and wear. So this is my necklace. This is my paper plate necklace. It's really up to you how much you want to decorate, how much you want to add. If you want to cut pieces off, add some ribbon to make it a little different. Uh, it can be adapted for men, for women, for kids, for teens. And it's really, you know, any type of Halloween costume, any type of carnival theme, any type of big parade or festivity where you need to make some little DIY swag. This is definitely a really cool and cost-effective way to do so. We started off with our paper plates, and now we have a necklace. Let me know how this went for you guys. If you have any questions, put it in the comments below. But send in your photos. Send it to the Local Bloco IG page. Tag Local Bloco, uh, and let's see what you're making. Stay safe.